What internet marketing expert should you spend your valuable time listening to? Listen to someone who has over 20 years of web marketing experience and hundreds of website marketing success stories. That man is Aaron Sparks from Site Strategics. And this is Edge of the Web Radio. All righty. Well, we have an article from... I think it's search engine land. Uh, uh, it's from Chris Silversmith. Um, it's about local SEO myths, and I, 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 I've, I agree with almost everything he's saying. So, so I want to go through some of these articles. You know, it's it's not just the ever increasing amount of information that can uh, that can overwhelm business. It's also the fact that search engines are now making changes to their algorithms. Every day, mm-hmm. every day, multiple times a day. Sometimes that's right. Uh, you know, while many of those changes are relatively subtle and low scale, the changing mm-hmm. conditions mean that the once mainstream SEO tactics mm-hmm. and per- possibly some of the stuff that was sold to you as a business owner, some 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 hypothetical tactics or or some some commonplace concepts like meta keywords in your in your web in your web pages. That's those those the, the the efficacy of those the value of those methods have been reduced over time because you just don't keep up with what's really needing to be plugged in mm-hmm. to your website on a regular basis you know it's perhaps it's due to the fact that you know it takes ongoing attention and experience to keep up with the changes over time or maybe it's because many people are conditioned into attempting to perform search engine marketing by themselves like a do it yourself type of lookup right and we know that happens on a regular basis internal of companies and and sometimes people businesses just can't tell that their own web page is woefully out of date right you know i i, I can't i can't stress that enough well, a lot of a lot of companies still believe that a uh... A website is a is an online brochure or a, yep. or a print piece. They don't they don't realize that it can be a living, breathing salesperson for their business. In fact, that's usually the first thing that anybody's interacting with whenever they're checking out a company is the site, whether or not it's 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 relevant information, mm-hmm. well whether or not it's it's topical in nature, if, if it's constantly being groomed. That impression that the company is 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 watching and paying attention to what they're doing and how they're brought and on top of that they're reaching out to their customers and sharing information the impression of uh, consumers are trained they know now to look at sites in a different way in fact even business owners are also consumers in other aspects of their life they don't bring that same expectation that they have towards the transactions that they have Back to their own website, mm-hmm. you know. It's 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 tough to realize that okay, we're not doing what I just, you know, I was looking at reviews for a particular uh, particular product, but I'm not looking at my own reviews, you know. Right, and that, and and they don't, you know. The other piece of it too is that people still have uh, trouble. They they look at marketing as an expense and not an investment. Yeah, and they don't they don't hold the agencies accountable that they're working with. You know, they just they just think it's a bill that they pay every month, but it sh- that bill should have a measurable marked improvement over time. That you know, they should see money coming back on on their web presence. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, here's a list of ten marketing myths that you should become familiar with, and you should also banish from your own thinking. Myth number one: We must have our keyword in the domain name. How about that? Yeah. Yep. It's not necessary for the businesses that are starting out with a vague sense of under of, of SEO understanding. It may seem like this is necessary for local search even more than regular search, but but having a keyword embedded in your domain isn't going to lend any advantage to ranking achievements. It's just not going to. Additionally, it should be pointed out that for established businesses, you know, somewhere around half of your search referral traffic is likely to be your own brand name. Mm-hmm. So over time, the best approach is to use your own brand name in your domain name. Myth number two, we have to have great rankings. Okay. Great ratings. And ratings. I'm so, oh, you, Well, that was Freudian, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we must have great rankings. Great r- ratings and reviews. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, in, in this article... Uh, the gentleman's talking about the average ratings and review uh, review uh, reviews online are not a ranking factor in in Google, except in cases where users are actually allowed to filter and reorder results based on the rating values. And it does have an effect on the local cal- carousel of images if you're looking for a particular service. Mm-hmm. You know, um, 
Mr. Silversmith, Mr. Silversmith says that if you're looking for this as a requirement for rankings, you're probably off. I will have to disagree with this one is yeah. that we have seen direct relationship to online rankings, increased rankings, to as we go into a rank or a review solicitation methodology for our clients, we are seeing and continue to see positive results on the organic rankings. I, 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 I can't stress it enough that, that I wholly uh, disagree with, with this perspective. Um, well, I got- it's, a, it's, a short, it's a short-sighted view, too, I think. It, it, you know, this is, this is my problem with a lot of these guys that are just, you know, I would say it's mathematicians, and, and they don't look at this as a, you know, as a people issue. They look at it as a math one. So maybe if he has thousands of points of data, he can't make a direct correlation between the two. But there's absolutely an indirect correlation. Yep. And that's that if you have great reviews, more people are talking about you, yes. you're going to have better authority on the web, mm-hmm. and you're going to rank better. That's right. You know, it's true the ratings and reviews can actually impact your business. Um, you know, to play it yeah. safe, follow some tips on getting reviews. But on top of that, you need to actually take a little bit more focus on that because we've seen effective changes. And on top of everything else, having those stars next to your domain, that's the yep. first point of sales persuasion that you can ever have whenever consumers looking for your, your information, um, that's that's where it's at right there. Um, you know, a, a couple other uh, key points about uh, about some myths inside of local optimization. You know, we don't need to optimize for mobile for our type of business. I, I hate to tell you, but if you don't understand how much mobile usage has been increasing over the past 10 years, chances are you're still using a buggy whip for your transportation. Uh, you know, the, 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 the thing is about 40% of the time is spent on, uh, the spent online is on mobile devices now. And this percentage is only likely to grow. So make sure your site is optimal for those devices. Google has stated that failure to optimize for mobile can impact your rankings. So that's one myth that you better lose pretty quickly. In fact, I was just doing an audit for one of our uh, SEO audit clients, and 52% of his traffic is mobile. It's fantastic. Wow. wow. And, I mean, I was blown away, but uh, not having a responsive design, a mobile-centric design, is a me- uh, the, the, the immediate call to action because the mobile traffic is trying to get there, and they're, they're seeing a desktop version of the website. You know, another myth is uh, my my business doesn't lend itself to fi- photos or videos. You know, I got to state state the obvious here is that photos and videos call attention from consumers and they'll interact with them. So uh, if you don't feel that you can take photos or videos for your company, perhaps you just haven't let your imagination go. You know, if your product or service isn't at all that interesting or photogenic, what about photography, photogra- photogra- yeah, photographing production processes, company events, or manufacturing processes? I mean, those things are still viable and interesting to consumers. What did you say? Absolutely. That's that's fantastic. Well, yeah. The other the other myth that I want to also debunk is, you know, I have to know how many calls I get from each different channel where my business listings are located. So I must use phone tracking numbers everywhere. Now we're a huge advocate of tracking calls, but predominantly inside of inside of AdWords where we have a direct monetization of the traffic. And on top of that, uh, you know, the overall overarching is organic and local. We can track with call tracking, but but if you're trying to get your, that tracking number into your local listing, the problem is it needs to be verifiable no. by Google. It needs to be found by Google in 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 that in that space, and it can't be a fictitious number. It can't be a rotating number. It's got to be something that's real.